Hey, it's Midnight Run, and today I thought I would share with you things you can do in Norfolk now that the lockdown has slightly lifted. So, summer will be on its way soon, although spring seems to have been held back, and I think summer is going to be exactly the same. We have literally just spent the entirety of May with rain every day. Um, if you live in the UK, you know what it's like. Rain is hit and miss, summer is hit and miss, so you can plan as much as you like about a day out but you can't plan the weather, so let's get to it. So today I am showing you part one of two, so part one, and then we have a part two coming up. So part one, I'm going to share with you things you can do in Norfolk. So I went to a couple of stores and I picked up some leaflets, and I'm gonna show you what's in my local area in Norfolk. Obviously there are more things in Norfolk than what I have here, and in my second video, but I thought I would share them with you just to give you an idea of what you can do this summer. So let's show you the first one. So the first one you can visit is Caister Castle Car Collection. So if you are a car enthusiast, this will be right up your alley. So it opens mid-May, so that's obviously with the pandemic. Um, Caister Castle is a 15th century moated castle situated in West Caister, it's five kilometers north of the town of Great Yarmouth. So if you want to visit Great Yarmouth while you're down there, you can do an entire day. Shows you how to get there. Obviously you can go on their website at castlecastle.co.uk and Google it. Inside, you get the little map that shows you the entire grounds. Obviously you can go on their website and see this in full, but you have a picnic area, you have the castle and the grounds, the tower is closed due to the pandemic and for the foreseeable future. Um, you have the porcelain china displays, the vehicle that exhibits, then you have a woodland walk and a picnic area. It is a fairly big place. Um, they're open 10 to 4 and ages 5 to 15 get in for half price, under 5s are free. Um, and I believe it's 17 pounds for an adult. So inside you will find over 120 cars, 100 motorbikes ranging from 1893 um, right up to the 1990s. And then in the china and porcelain display down the bottom, you get 25,000 feet um, to explore double the size in recent years of various bikes, carriages, pedal cars, china displays, and much, much more. So if you really want to take some pictures, go for a walk, have afternoon tea at their cafe, it is a perfect little day out. And then obviously you can go into Yarmouth because it's literally just down the road from it. But that is Caister Castle. Next, if you live my direction, you have the Muckleborough Military Collection. So if you're a tank enthusiast, a World War II enthusiast, or one, or you just love tanks and war, so this obviously is um, to do with tanks, so you have museum displays, you have a cafe and shop, you've got military vehicles, you've got a tank demonstration, how cool is that, that actually goes right out onto the area, you've got drive and track vehicles, you have a little map inside, um, obviously safety is paramount on the entire place, no public access to the beach or airfield, do not climb on the equipment. So the Muckleborough Collection is more than a large number of tanks and guns. Established over 30 years, it comprises of a huge collection of artefacts, military uniforms, guns, tank, um, and stuff like that. Got a picnic area. You can take your dogs to the museum, but you can't take them in the museum. You have a little map on the back, and it's open until October this year, um, which isn't bad, and open 10 to um, you can also take your school there, um, which I think is pretty cool. So if you're into tanks, if you want more information, you can go to their website, which is at muckleborough.co.uk, um, and you can check them out for more information. So if you are a huge fan of tanks, okay, next. If you're not a big fan of tanks, but you are a big fan of Steam trains, this could be right up your alley, and this is the Burr Valley Railway. So this is a preserved railway line. Um, so this is trains from Elsham and Roxham. Um, under fives go free, which is also good. 
Um, you have the train timetable there, which is pretty cool. They are open most of the year, right up until the end of October. Um, so you can pick a toy up in their gift shop. Um, you have the Rocks and Broads nearby, so if you want to spend the day at Burr Valley and then go to the Rocks and Broads, it's just down the road. You can have your afternoon tea at the Whistle Stop Cafe at Elsham. You can also go into the Elsham Town Centre because you can get off the train, go into town and then get back on it as long as you get back by the end of the day. Um, each of the steam trains will depend on what day you go. Um, so you can have a train return ticket uh, for £15 for an adult and it's £7.50 for a child. Or you can just go one way and it's £9.50 for an adult and six for a child. Um, yeah, the journey is about 45 minutes each way. So it's not a bad journey. It's got wheelchair access, which is also good. Um, so yeah, if you are a fan of the little narrow gauge steam trains, this is a perfect little day. You can go from one end to the other, get off at Roxham and see the broads or get off at Elsham and have um, lunch at the Whistle Stop Cafe and then you can get back on and go back and then get off at Roxham and spend the day there or vice versa. So I think that's a cool little trip, especially if you've got young kids. Young kids will love a train, they'll love the boats at the broads. Um, speaking of the broads, next we have the broads tour. So going from one broad to another, these are river day and boat hires, the perfect way to discover the broads. You can go to broadstore.co.uk for more information. You can go on the broads and have a river trip. Look at these boats. So you have different boats depending on what days you go. So you could be on the vintage broadsman, which has a top area. You've got the queen of the broads here, which is um, kind of covered. Then you've got the Bell of the Broads. Then you've got the, what does that say? Cordon Rouge. And my personal favorite is the um, Vintage Broadsman. So you can have a river chip for a family of four for 39 pounds. Range of tickets available for all. Or if you are brave, you can actually hire a boat for the day and go on the actual broads. So you can hire all the different boats, so you've got a standard boat, a large electric boat, a wheelchair access boat and a day cruiser from 19 to 26 pounds per hour. So if you don't want to go on the boat and have a tour that's guided tour, you can take the boat out yourself if you're a little bit brave. So you can have a guided tour, river, river trip with commentary. The trips run for about an hour and a half to two hours if you get on one of the broad tours. So they're quite a long journey. So if you have little kids, maybe think about what, um, whether you want to take your own boat out because uh, maybe the little kids don't want to sit there for two hours. Um, you can captain of your own, captain using your own ship. Or you can discover the broads by walking around. It's all there. So like I said, check out the website. So whether you want to take a trip on a day boat, or a river boat, or um, depending on what you're brave on, driving your own boat for the day, sounds pretty cool. Never done it before. I have been on the boat before, but I've never driven a boat. Next, we have this one. So this is Holcomb, where the sea meets the sky, or the sky meets the sea. So Holcomb is a pretty cool place. Um, you can eat, stay, and shop. And there's this little map. To show you Holcomb. So Holcomb is a pretty nice area. You've got the landscape, the wildlife, um, you've got the beach, you've got the Wells Beach Cafe, you've got the Courtyard Cafe. So Holcomb actually has a place called Holcomb Hall which you can also visit um, and Holcomb Hall is um, a nice day out. Um, so you've got Holcomb Wonder, You've got the cafe, you've got lookouts along the beach, so if you're a avid bird watcher. Um, you've got Walden Gardens, you've got the Holcomb Story Experience. But yes, you've got Holcomb Hall, which is a beautiful, beautiful place to go to. It's an 18th century Paladine Hall, um, which has secrets and stories. It has exquisite furniture, books, 
um, antiques, it has a garden, tapestries, paintings, and you can go visit it. And this is Holcomb. So Holcomb is a fairly, I wouldn't say it's a fairly well-known place to go around Norfolk. Um, usually the more well-known places are the seaside resorts. You do have the sea obviously near it, but you also have the nature reserve, which is more um, that catches my eye. So on the back, you get a list of what you can do. So like I said, the Holcomb Hall, the beach. You can also go to the Victoria Inn where you can have a relaxing night's stay. You've got the woodland play area. So you've got an entire area. Um, and obviously you've also got Holcomb Hall, which is a beautiful attraction to go to. I actually have plans to go to Holcomb Hall. So if I ever do go and I manage to go um, with the COVID situation, I will of course film um, and take pictures as much as I can. So Holcomb is a very, I wouldn't say it's a well-known part of Norfolk to go to. A lot of people do head to um, more places like Yarmouth and Lower Stuff and stuff like that. And then the last one I had to show you was near me and this is Discover King's Lynn. So Kings Lynn is a small fishing town, or it was a fishing town back in the day, uh, where you used to get the salmon and the boats, but it does have a lot to offer. So if you are an avid person for museums, Kings Lynn has quite a few. So the first one you have is the Lynn Museum, and this tells you about um, Sea Henge. It tells you about these experiences of Norfolk, the Victorian Fairground, the Gallopers, and stuff like that. Then you have the Kings Lynn Town Guides, where you can have a guided tour, which goes through all 900 years of the maritime and trading history. You can go um, to the Maritime Trail, which takes you around, and you get, collect a map from the tourist information. You can go to the Fisher Norfolk's Museum and learn about smoking fish, the fishermen, the broads, um, learn the history and then you can go to the tourist information to get all this information I've just given you. Um, you can also pick up the map. If you want to go a bit more in town you can go to the Corn Exchange Theatre which has productions when Covid isn't happening. You've got the Marriott's Warehouse which is a building that dates back to the 1580s. You've got the Walks which is 17 hectares of 18th century parkland. You've got the Kings Lynn Minister Church, which is a beautiful church. There's also a really nice waffle place around the corner from it called Waffle Waffleopolis, I think it's pronounced. You've got the Guild Hall, which is a great list of buildings that you can look around to do with Shakespeare. You have the St. Nicholas Chapel, um, which dates back to 1225. You've got the Red Mount um, Chapel, which is an 18th century mountain chapel. You have the Tower Gardens um, in the centre. You have the South Gate, which is the South Gate, which is an impressive, I mean, an impressive. The buses actually drive beside this as you go into the town centre. So that is the Red, Red, yeah, yeah. the South Gate, which is a three floor learning about the roles and the defences that were used in Kings Lynn. And then you have the Hans House, which is a medieval cartel learning the history behind the courtyards, the warehouses um, in Lynn. So you get that. Then you get all the museums and then you get Lynn itself, which is massive. So you get um, North Lynn and South Lynn and there is so much to do. Um, like I said, you've got the trails, you've got the walks, you've got everything you can imagine there you've also got the shopping you've got bingo you've got the cinema and it's literally an hour away from Hunstanton if you fancy a journey to the coast afterwards so there is my first um, tourist information about Norfolk it's not sponsored or anything I picked these up from my local supermarket and thought I would share them with you with COVID lifting. It is great to get out there now that COVID is lifting. I do have a part two coming up which is going to feature um, some of the theme parks and local zoos in the area so stay tuned for that one. So once again we have King's Lynn, we have the Broad Tours which are really good, I highly recommend them. 
the Burr Valley Railway, especially if your little boy likes Thomas the Tank Engine. The Mucklebrat, every boy loves a tank and girls will love this experience too. Um, you can even have an experience, I believe, here where you can actually get in the tank as well. Next, we have the Castle Caster Car Collection. So if you're a car enthusiast or you love gardens or you love afternoon tea, another one I would recommend. And then last of all, we had Holcomb, where you can go to Holcomb Hall, you can go to the beach, you can go to the nature reserve and literally spend an entire day just in one place. Um, so if you want to see more of these, I have a part two coming up very soon, which is going to feature zoos and theme parks in the area. So Norfolk is a wonderful place. If you don't live in Norfolk, I am the Midnight Raven. I am from Norfolk myself. I've lived here all my life. <laughs> um, and these places, I have visited many of them, some of them quite a few times. So here is the information. If you want to know more information, I'm going to link all the websites in the description below so you can go and check these out. If you're not from Norfolk, maybe one day consider visiting Norfolk. It's a wonderful area of a beautiful coastline. I'm not sponsored or affiliated, but if you'd like to donate, my PayPal is in the description. And if you'd like to see more of me, you can join me on Instagram. I am the Midnight Raven. And I'll see you all very soon for part two of local tourist attractions in Norfolk that you can visit now that COVID is lifting. Take care and thanks for watching. Bye.